पहले जब लगाया तेरा एस पी पे ही चलता था अपना bladder is a normal bladder showing normal ureter this is normal vasculature of the bladder and we are trying to locate the ureteric orifice which is normal slit like there is some debris in the bladder which can be removed by repeated wash out again see the normal vasculature And again showing the normal ureter flux of the urine can be seen this is a congested bladder this is a normal bladder neck urethra normal prostate internal sphincter can be seen closing and normal anterior urethra this is a stadium type of ureter it's white there's lot of debris and this is a golf hole ureter you can see scope is almost entering inside one more view of the golf hole ureter This is an interureteric bar. Leading to the ureter. Again, a normal-looking ureter. Now. you will be shown catheterization ureter is located 
tip of the catheter placed and catheter pushed in while pushing the catheter count is made how many centimeters have been pushed and you can see you take it out centimeter by centimeter and put it wherever you want again it will be shown how to put it in now you can see the intramural course which is being shown this is catheterization on the left side now you will see prosthetic utricle in the same patient the catheter which is being put in the utricle and there is one more hole which is seen above which now will be shown to take the scope the normally closing and opening bladder neck and the large veru this patient had a mobile veru montanum causing obstruction you can see veru montanum slipping in the bladder neck This is case of posterior urethral valve. When pressure is put on the full bladder, valve can be shown to be closing. Now, fulguration by Bugby electrode or a ureteric catheter will be seen. Another view of posterior urethral valve. valves are located with 30 degree telescope tip of the bugby or a ureteric catheter tip of which is cut off and the point is brought out is put on the valve and then valve fulgurated you will see the full procedure of fulguration when you do the fulguration you have to make sure that insulation of the ureteric catheter is visible outside the scope gradually valve base on both the side is being destroyed I have not been able to show the fulguration with resectoscope because it just went out of order when I was doing the videoscopy. At the end of this procedure, stream of the urine 
should always be checked which is seen to be greatly improved here again there is lot of debris will be washed out before doing the procedure you can see the speculation grade 1 at places grade 2 at places and this is grade 3 speculation with speculation and this is a ureter seen to be opening in one of the sacules some more speculation this is a case of pu valve This was another case of posterior urethral valve, which can now be seen. This is a stent which was put is being shown to be removed caught with a forceps and removed This is a case of a prostatic utricle scope is passed into the utricle this is a great two size utricle in a case of incomplete tss this is a case of adreno genital syndrome we are coming out of bladder and opening of the vagina can be seen lower down and now we will be entering the vagina this is another case where there is a megalo urethra with incontinence and episphadias urethra was reconstructed and he developed urethral stones the adhesions in the reconstructed urethra can be seen this was done somewhere outside and patient had repeated retention due to stones they were removed using dormia basketing you can see multiple stones dormia basket is introduced and there is a stone held in that
and now it is being removed this is a case with small multiple soft bladder stones This is a bladder. Normal female urethra. And now, opening of the vagina will be seen. This was a case of adrenogenital syndrome. Now we are entering the vagina. This is normal vagina and that is normal cervix. And this is formal channel. Here again a case of a cloaca. This is the bladder. Coming out of bladder. And now we are in vagina. We are entering the rectum, that is the rectal mucosa with rugi. And this is bifid vagina. The rectum was opening in the right vag vagina. And this is common channel, ureter, uh, ureteral opening can be seen at the top and we are entering the bladder, vagina and this is a case of double urethra urine can be seen coming out from the rectal urethra and this is the atretic urethra which was removed from the penis joining the main urethra and now dilator will be passed into the main urethra which is opening in the rectum this was disconnected from the main urethra main urethra dissected from rectum and separated and brought to the perineum. Creating a perineal urethrostomy. 
another case of TSF with large prostatic utricle no cervix another case of bifid vagina And this is a case of ureterocele. The bulging can be seen almost closing the bladder neck. The bulge on the right, the large bulge and visible. It was impossible to see the opening of the ureter. A blind puncture with cold knife was done. and now urine can be seen coming out there is one more puncture done and then the both the punctures were joined together this reduce the size of the urethral visibly on the table and even post operatively it became less than half the size and infection came under control isolation compared to four towels this is nice good fibrotic phimosis for circumcision first open the skin 
clean it with spirit or better din and completely separate the prepuce up to the corona cleaning up all the smegma bring the skin back find the mucocutaneous junction and put two artery forces which are then held upright and a strong clamp is applied just above the glands level feeling the tip of the glands with the thumb the skin is cut above the artery fossas this gives a good clean sharp circular cut the skin is retracted the lower part is held by the assistant there are always three permanent bleeders with one at the frenum position and the third one is at 10 o'clock position these are the main bleeders with a bleeder at the the mucosa is then held in straight artery fossas and divided up to the 3 mm from corona a rim of mucosa is cut leaving 3 to 4 mm of the inner layer of the prepuce on either side the base are tied to be staged on one side taking a single stitch reduces post operative edema and pain
body is felt an incision is taken just over the palpable gubernaculum or the testis it's about 3/4 of an inch incision the edges at the level of subcuticular tissue are held in the straight artery fossils and incision deepen holding the artery fossils lifted up and cutting allows free cutting without cutting the external oblique and it will be cut only up to deep layer of ing deep layer of superficial fascia which is seen beautifully the tractor is put and test is picked up and little bit of the section is done to hold the test is freely in the hand now now you can see the pull of the gubernaculum on the scrotum gubernaculum is separated with a plain forceps and little bit of end tissue can be cut off if it is bloodless or cut off after putting artery forceps the cord is totally free you can now see the external ring which has not been opened and being lifted out by the artery fossils that is the external ring the total procedure is carried out outside the external ring when it is a palpable test is sac is held in artery fossils exactly opposite the vas and the vessels separation of vas and vessels is done as far as possible without opening the sac this is more easy and faster and less damaging sometimes if the internal sporadic fascia is very well developed little bit of scissor dissection may be necessary to separate it now you can see that sac is almost completely separated from the vas and the vessels sac is in front which is being clamped and the vas and vessels are behind section is carried right down till the texture of the sac changes this is an external ring and preperitoneal fat 
is seen. Back is then ligated, transfixed and cut. You can see the length gained and test is lying very comfortably without doing any retroperitoneal dissection. is being cut you can see it disappear inside the peritoneum now the testes will be turned upside down without twisting 180 degrees so that there is no rotation long artery process is passed just below the superficial fascia deep layer two ellis forceps are put on the lower third of the scrotum transverse incision is made in the scrotum and holding the upper edge and blunt dissection a pouch is created in the scrotum artery process is pushed out and the tissue held in two small mosquito curled artery process and pushed through second artery process is then railroaded tract is formed using artery forceps so it is quite narrow and will not allow the pulled testes to go back and you do not need any additional testes fixation A loose stitch is taken in the areolar tissue which was held in the artery forceps. You can see the testes are lying very comfortably and cannot get retracted back and color of the testes is quite good. Wounds are closed using subcuticular stitching. Bilateral undescended testes can be done simultaneously at the same sitting. with good testes, good epididymis, which is partly detached, with vast difference can be seen in this pole and the testicular vessels which are seen in this pole, which are quite short.
Multa. Now you can show the bleeding bleeding happening. Okay? Yeah. Now start the show. You can start showing the testes, the color, the little congestion, epididymis, was the length is now adequate to come. Financial incision is taken, peritoneum reflected upwards and bladder held inward in stage 2 sutures. Incision in the bladder is made vertically using diathermy to minimize the bleeding. Final cut in the mucosa is made with a stab knife. Urine is sucked out immediately by putting the suction inside the bladder. And holding it to minimize the contamination. Then empty bladder is opened further down and remaining urine sucked out. Stone holder is put in the bladder. Sometimes small stones don't come out and may have to be removed with the finger. Here is a stone coming out.
bladder is sutured in two layers using 30 chromic catgut through and through sutures for a pure virgin bladder stone is no need to do any scopy beforehand and post operatively neither suprapubic nor periurethral catheter is necessary if there is no distal obstruction wound will heal beautifully and there will be no leak second layer is serum muscular above the first layer there is good hemostasis and bladder is open using the diathermy for pure bladder stone there is no need even to put a retroperitoneal corrugated drain incision being panencil patient goes home within 2 or 3 days the rectus muscles are approximated anterior sheath is closed using continuous stitch sometimes corrugated drain can get into the wound and keep the wound open creating leak of the urine wound is closed by subcutaneous stitching big stone the stone can be seen in the left side picture and associated hydrocele hydronephrosis can be seen on the right side picture classical morrison incision posteriorly taken Subcostal nerve is taken care of and retracted superiorly or inferiorly, depending on how comfortably it can be retracted.
now the this is the lumbar fascia which has been cut and the transversal fascia cut anteriorly in continuation now this is zerota fascia no attempt is made to separate the peritoneum from the kidney that is subcostal nerve zerota fascia is opened and dissection carried out inside peritoneum automatically gets reflected anteriorly ureter is being hooked so that the stone does not slip downwards a catheter is passed and ureter held on the catheter this will block the downward passage then what a little fat is attached to the pelvis is cleared and a vertical incision is made in the pelvis patient is usually given a little 10 degrees or so of a head high position so the stone doesn't slip into the upper calyx which is very difficult to reach especially when it is a small stone urine coming out is all sucked out and now you will see the stone that is stone black that is it stone is removed using stone holding forceps or an artery forceps it is patency of the ure distal ureter is checked by pushing the fluid and pelvis closed by locking continuous to sutures wound is closed in layer keeping perinephric drain
फ्यूज है राइट साइड फ्यूज है यूरेटर इज नॉट सीन दे इज अड्रोनेफ्रोसिस एंड अ कट ऑफ एट द पेलविस ऑपोजिट किडनी इज नॉर्मल दिस इज द पोजिशन फॉर क्लासिकल मॉरिसन इंसिजन अपर लेग एक्सटेंडेड लोअर लेग लेग्स विद अ पिलो इन बिटवीन एंड पेशेंट इन लेफ्ट इन लेटरल पोजिशन इंसिशन आई प्रिफर पोस्टीरियर इंसिशन ओन ओपन इन लेयर्स now number fascia is cut and that is zerota fascia that is subcostal nerve which is then retracted no attempt is made to separate the peritoneum zerota fascia is opened and separating the kidney from zerota fascia automatically pushes peritoneum anteriorly any bleeder is caught right as there is lot of fat there is lot of bleeding in zerota fascia That is the kidney being separated from zerota fascia with blunt dissection. There are some additions which will be. kidney partially delivered out ureter is then hooked and held in rubber catheter that is the hydronephrosis a medial stitch is then taken in the ureter to hold it and to identify the side cutting it off from the pelvis ureter is then cut off you can see there is no urine draining out from the ureter even through its cut end patency of the distal ureter is then checked using a saline flush it's going in easily and there is no water coming back ureter is then slit laterally for at least 2 cm if extra length available maybe 2 and 1/2 cm again you can see there is no urine coming out pelvis is then cut on either side from near its lower pole keeping 
at least half an inch of pelvic rim from the kidney cortex the vessels are separated and safeguarded those are the vessels and then the upper pole is cut keeping a rim of pelvis make sure that by mistake the suturing is not done in the calyx suturing is then started at the upper pole using continuous locking sutures this is continued till last 3 to 3 and a half centimeters of pelvis is left and the stitch interrupted using cobbler knot process is kept and thread cut off the stitching is then started at the lower end taking it at the angle of the cut on the ureter outside in and then taking the pelvis lower end exactly in the center inside out and tied is then brought on the inside and suturing started using locking stitches in the posterior wall carried out till the half of the ureter on the cut edge and interrupted using cobbler knot
the knot should be taken outside hence the needle is being brought out cobbler knot is more secure and also saves a lot of suture material again a new stitch is started at the lower end outside in at the angle of the ureter and inside out in the pelvis then tied to the previously cut thread so as to give more waterproof effect stitching is continued on the anterior wall with like locking to the sutures on the outside right till where the previous stitch was interrupted The knot is then tied with cobbler knot and then this thread tied with the posterior wall thread to make it waterproof all the time the stent is left while stitching to avoid accidental suturing of the posterior wall the stitching is then continued on to the pelvis and catheter taken out previous left end and the present end are tied up together and make it as waterproof as possible no stent or a nephrostomy is left behind if there is a good length of anastomosis as it is seen and good waterproof anastomosis there is 
no need to put any of these stents or nephrostomies. Only a perinephric drain is left behind, which is then removed on eighth day. Zerata fascia is closed. And the rest of the wound closed that. That was subcostal nerve. Lumbar fascia being closed. That is the second layer. Of the tumor is marked. Approach is upper abdominal transverse muscle cutting incision, transperitoneal. You can see that colon is lifted up and tumor is just behind the colon. Now colon is being defected and reflected medially with sharp and blunt dissection. After reflecting the colon, first thing that is done is the ureter is identified and hooked. It is dissected as much downward as possible and transfix
tumor is then reflected upwards and all around you can see the ibc and the renal vessels the tumor is freed all around now the renal pedicle is being tied this is the renal vein artery could not be identified separately and hence the whole pedicle was taken together it is ligated at both ends and then a transfixation stitch is taken after which it is cut distal to the transfixation usually there are some additions near its upper pole and now artery can be seen in the upper artery fossils and rest of the remaining facial tissue is clamped and cut with a diathermy tumor is almost separate tumor is removed and the tumor bed is then examined for any lymph nodes in para aortic region you can see the pulsations of aorta and the ibc these are the lymph nodes the whole chain of lymph nodes will now be dissected availability of ct scan inspection of the opposite kidney can be left to be done at the end when it is more easy you can see the chain of lymph nodes coming out hemostasis is achieved a gel form is left in the fossa and one closed in layers in all cases of malignancy i close the abdomen with tension sutures so the chance of wound lesions is re rare and chemo radiotherapy if necessary can be started early this is the specimen this is pelvis and the ureter and almost whole of the kidney is occupied by the tumor and very little of kidney normal kidney tissue can be seen
A case of CH. These are the flaps which are marked for simultaneous plateroplasty and vaginoplasty. After doing cystoscopy at the time of surgery, it was realized that this is a long channel CAH and hence only plateroplasty was performed. An incision is taken all around the corona about 5 millimeters proximal to the corona. Degloving is done up to the base of the penis. At this stage, dorsal slit can be made in the dorsal hood of the penis if one wants. Incision is left incomplete in on the ventral surface so the continuity of the mucosa remains. Now you can see the separation of neurovascular bundle. This is very nicely visible here. Here, they are. Same thing is repeated on the opposite side. Now we are near the suspensory ligament. And this is the opposite neurovascular bundle. is taken all around the corpora keeping the neurovascular bundle away. On either side. Now the suspensory ligament is being cut followed by cutting the body of the clitoris near its base at the pubic symphysis. Hemostasis is secured. This work is done using diathermy to minimize the bleeding. It is completely separated and neurovascular bundle is intact and there is hardly any bleeding at the base. Now the distal part is cut through the part of the glands but not 
attaching the neurovascular bundle. is out and glands is now stitched at the base. This was a long common channel which was then partially opened up. long channel is quite obvious. Dorsal hood is now being cut. This can be done right in the beginning also which does ease the dissection of degloving. This will form the labia minora. Now glans is being stitched to its base using absorbable suture. Two such sutures will be taken. Glance is looking slightly blue black is because of the marking ink. Sitting nicely inside and this Navia minora is forming. Excess tissue is cut off and, and its parking is done in the ventral cut. You can see the parking. Plasty is nearly complete. If this was a short channel CH labia majora also would have been constructed and flattened and the pre-rectal U-shaped flap would have gone into the posterior wall of vagina. You can see there is a police catheter put in to avoid post-operative wound contamination. 
is live livia minora this is what would have happened if this was a short channel and this is a fully catheter case of ectopia vasicae an incision is made vertical with going around the bladder the ureters are being catheterized bladder has been dissected all around the dissection is being deepened prefer sharp dissection this is vast difference and that's a vast difference on the opposite side incision is carried on to the base of the penis now a dissection is being carried out to separate the spermatic cord the anterior pubic osteotomy will be performed just medial to the external ring and lateral to the pubic tubercle safeguarding the cord structure
அது same procedure is being repeated on the opposite side Cord structures are being separated. Now here they are hooked. Put on the catheter and safeguard it. Infiltration is being made to the urethral bed before carrying out the osteotomy so that adrenaline will have acted by the time dissection is done. Now you can feel the tubercle, that is the external ring and that is the attachment of the rectus muscle we are just lateral to the rectus muscle attachment and medial to the external ring which is quite obvious initial part of the bone is cut with the diathermy which is then followed by cutting with a double action bone cutter osteotomy hardly takes 10 minutes and there is very little bleeding there are no major vessels underneath the iliac vessels and the femoral vessels are far away and obturatal vessels are also quite posteriorly situated. You can see the osteotomy is now complete and the amount of mobility that has been gained. Whole finger is going inside. This is then packed with bone wax and the gauze piece to stop any oozing that is occurring. Same procedure is being repeated on the opposite side. In small children, it's easy to get it only with pubic osteotomy. But if it does not come, an ischial osteotomy can be performed subperiosteally and there is no problem approximating. Now urethra is being dissected so that it is pushed inside and verum montanum lies much more inside. Because of the infiltration the bleeding is minimized. That 
is the intersimplential band which I do not like to cut but use it as a suspend, suspensory ligament when the pubic bones come here close and this gives an angle to the urethra. Now the cordy is being released from the penis. The catheters are inserted into the bladder and brought out through a hole in the abdominal wall creating artificial umbilicus. Hole of the tip of the malicose catheter is cut off so that it does not occupy too much space in the small reconstructed bladder. This is a polypoid bladder but will close very nicely and easily. A thread is tied to one of the tubes to identify left and right. Malikos catheter also comes out through the same wound. Bladder closure is now in progress. single layer through and through stitching is done using 3-0 chromic catgut. The suturing is done up to the neck. This is the neck and you can see the full closure of the bladder. Catheter is being inserted, number 8 FG, over which urethra will be later on constructed. Now bladder neck is just being closed so it is tight on 8 number catheter corpora are being stitched together pubic osteotomy slice them downwards and nearly a centimeter and a half to two centimeter length is gained. Which is quite obvious. Now urethra is being reconstructed on 8 number feeding tube.
this 50 chromic catgut is used. We are approaching near the bladder neck. Cobbler knot is tied at the end. Which is then tied to the left out thread of the bladder closure to make it more waterproof. Blood is lying comfortably. Now the packed gauze pieces are removed, showing the dry fill and very little bleeding on either side. Side flaps are further raised to get flap to cover the uret now a stitch is being taken in the pubis using 10 white krill i used to use ethicon for the same but Three out of twenty cases got infection from the ethylon, and fully continent patients develop fibrosis and back pressure changes. So now I use. Vicryl for the inside, and one ethylon stitch will be taken from outside, which will come out after six weeks. You can see the pubic bones are coming close quite easily. Rectus muscles can be seen falling next to each other. Now rectus muscles are being stitched. Muscle being approximated at the lower end. Dry field is visible, and a lot of space has been gained. One more stitch is taken through the pubic bones at the end of closure of the rectus muscle to remove any further tension that is. remaining
एट नंबर कैथेटर इज रिप्लेस बाय फाइव नंबर फीडिंग ट्यूब एंड पीनाइल स्किन क्लोजर इज इन प्रोग्रेस The flaps are now attached to the edge of the urethra. Urethra is being stitched to the skin margin. Now abdominal wound is being sutured. corrugated drain is left in the subcutaneous tissue ethylon stitch is being put coming from the skin through the bones and out to the again closure is nearly complete and the abdominal wound is being a cross piece is put on which the athlon stitch is tied
small amount of collected blood ki is being seen oozing out the total blood loss in the operation was about 40 cc this was a 4 month old baby the catheters are now fixed between the sticking plasters stuck to each other one after another so the flower of the malicos does not allow them to slip out individually and then they can be comfortably allowed to lie on the abdominal wall patient is tied tied for 2 weeks female extrusion incision is marked a mother is taught an exercise to invaginate the bladder every day twice a day for 10 minutes this keeps the bladder very supple even when i do the operation at 6 months age skin is separated from the rectus muscle and rectus muscle from the peritoneum now the incision is being deepened behind the bladder these are the two ureteric catheters that is the intersymphysteal band which is not detached from the symphysis but kept intact now that's the external ring in which the process is being put and that's the rectus muscle attachment osteotomy will be carried out between the two now after the use of the atherme bone cutter is used to do the osteotomy it is very easy and practically bloodless you can see it is complete whole finger has gone inside and mobility is visible same thing will be repeated on the opposite side that is the round ligament after osteotomy the site is packed with gauze now the osteotomy is complete on either side and closure is going to be started the catheters are all taken out through the same incision forming an artificial umbilicus and flower of the melicos is completely cut 
bladder is being closed using 3-0 chromic catheter. Urethra is constructed over 8 number feeding tube Nice length of urethra is seen with a good angle and bladder like comfortably Rectus muscle is now closed and we will start closure of the symphysis pubis. They come close together with tremendous ease. In this child, total blood loss was only about 28 cc. See how easily they are coming together without any tension. One more stitch is tied using 10Y krill and then a ethylon stitch will be taken going through the skin and the symphysis pubis and out through the skin. Corrugated drain is left just behind the rectus muscles. This is the ethylon stitch is now being pushed through the bone and tied on the gauze piece. The rest of the wound is closed in layers. And you can see it is very, very comfortable.
buried penis is a partially buried penis with some rotational deformity you can see it a circumferential incision is taken just about 5 mm from corona and total degloving is done on the ventral surface there is a fibrous strand which goes from the meatus to the base and cutting of this is very very important right up to the base you can see the way length is gained as we go on cutting that strand you can see it is totally bearing the penis a dorsal slit is made in the hood no skin is wasted and this is then transferred to the ventral surface deep gloving and cutting of fibrous tissue is very important this is the band which is again being seen cut you can see it very nicely and this straightens the penis straight away can see penis has come out dorsal skin being transferred on the ventral side and being stitched all around taking one fixation stitch at the base and then vertical suturing on the ventral side and suturing around the corona this has worked beautifully in partially buried penis two cases that i have done i have not yet tried in completely buried penis This is a fixation stitch in the skin and the base of the penis on the ventral side, so the skin does not slide upwards and remains fixed. Severe cordy. Cordy is excised catheter is placed in the urethra. Gland is being split till the center. are prepared
they are transferred ventrally no diathermy or only bipolar diathermy is used suturing is started first proximally and next parking stage is taken through the tip of the flap and the split glans penis same procedure repeated on the other side rest of the sutures are taken approximating the edges final result dressing is done using paraffin gauze and foam pino scrotal transposition penis is situated in the mid scrotal level and test is more anteriorly this is very obvious that is hypospadias associated with transposition this is the incision which goes in a w shape on the upper surface of the scrotum all around and cut in the center on the ventral aspect of the penis the penis is separated and degloved right up to the base a catheter is kept in the urethra while dissecting so as to avoid injury to the urethra incision is deepened laterally into the scrotal skin taking care of the hemostasis using diathermy you can see the skin is getting gradually transferred ventrally the skin is shown how the stitching will be done stitching is started at the proximal end and penis is being pushed out this is very obvious that it is now lying much more anteriorly
by slab are then created from the dorsal hood which are transferred ventrally correcting the final part of the transposition and covering the raw area on the penis the difference is quite obvious from the beginning of the picture to the end of the picture Plateau vaginoplasty. In case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia, a female patient looks like a male patient with enlarged clitoris, and there is only one single opening in the through which urine, urine comes out, and vagina also opens into that. first infiltration is done to minimize the bleeding then a cystoscopy is done to find out the length of the common channel this the incisions are then marked a rectal flap the labia majora flap and the clitoral flap a stay stitch is put in the glans penis circum coronal incision is taken which is then deepened on dorsal aspect and lateral aspect vertical incision is then taken in the center of the skin dorsally and clitoris is separated all around till the suspensory ligament incision is then deepened ventrally so that it goes through and through and a catheter is passed to hold the clitoris then neurovascular bundle is separated going from the lateral side along with the fibrous tissue from other side now you can see neurovascular bundle is completely separated
batteries is now ready for cutting off at the base. Neurovascular bundle is safeguarded on one side and then clitoris is cut at its base just under the symphysis pubis. The whole dissection is done with coagulation cautery and intermittently cutting cautery. At the end it is made sure that there is no bleeding. Once it is separated from the base, then it is cut from the clitoris, uh, from the glands, taking out a small core of glands along with it, all the time taking care of the neurovascular bundle. Platorectomy is now complete. You can see that now the lower dissection is proceeded into. The posterior U shaped flap is now being prepared. This dissection usually has a lot of bleeding, and hence, wherever possible use of diathermy is made. Leaders are caught as and with when they come and separated out, coagulated. The vertical incision is then taken in the inner tissue till the vagina is visible. Now catheter is being put into the urethra. Dilatory showing the vagina. Vagina will now be slit posteriorly. The posterior U flap is now being placed in the slit vagina. Switches are put on either side of the first stitch on the posterior flap. The 
anterior resection is carried out separating the labia majora flaps and continuing them into the lateral flaps a strip of mucosa is left intact from the ventral surface of the clitoris to the urethra labia majora skin is separated from the fat and as much amount of fat as possible is removed so that the look of labia majora is changed to more of a labia majora rather than scrotum same procedure is now being repeated on the opposite side this is is achieved now clitoris is being fixed to the base you can see the intact neurovascular bundle stitches are taken one posterior and one anterior to fix the clitoris at the base now the labia majora flap is being sutured to the corner of the posterior flap Lateral flaps are now being prepared to make labia minora. The posterior edge of the lateral flap is stitched to the lateral wall of the vagina.
लेटर पार्ट ऑफ दी क्लाइटोर फ्लैप इज स्ट्रेच टू द लेटर मीडियल पार्ट ऑफ दी लेबिया मेजर ऑफ फ्लैप upper part of clitoris is being folded onto itself skin to give it an appearance of labia minora constructed on right side polis catheter is being introduced in the urethra suturing is complete three pubic skin is being fixed to the coronal skin now lateral flaps are being sutured now suturing is complete and This is the end result. Once edema subsides, it will look like a normal female.